Shoot. Yes. My regular up scene fans. I'm a Facebook fans. Once again, you know, we ain't loan some in the ad seat. I draw things that you know who my have right side of me. The original veteran Boris Gardner. Yeah? What well, Boris? Why I'm there, you know. I get yeah. in there. Yes, man. But let me, let me, let me just ask a few little questions because nothing the real one where you know, them never know because I have what a reason. And I show me some vibes where eh? I have to ask you yourself and make the people them know. Yeah, so I've got, when I'm about Boris Gardner, I'm one of those things I want to wake up with you. I did just have that tune that I wrote out there, you know, because Boris Gardner is a, is a great man in the music, the, the, you know, for the foundation of the music. You can just give me some rundown from the 60s. What and what? Come in, what's the early quid him to, you know? Are you yeah. a baby, you know? Yeah, man. You see, I have been in the show business from 1960. You hear that? I started with a group called the Rhythm Aces. Mm -hmm. And we recorded a couple of tunes like A Thousand Teardrops mm -hmm. and The Meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Right? And then as time went by, the group broke up and I joined like Jamaica bands. Okay. Um, Kestrin and the Souvenirs are the yeah. top band. Mm -hmm. And then Carlos Malcolm of a Jamaican rhythm. Yes. This went on in the, the 60s. Mm -hmm. Um, I started playing the bass on the bandstand of Carlos Malcolm of a Jamaican rhythm. Okay. Because the bass player had left and Paul, Carlos could not find a bassist. Mm -hmm. So he looked at me and said, Boy, Boris, <laughs> you know, you go have to play bass, you know. Just like that. Yes, man. And he gave me the bass. And I started boom, 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 boom around until. I started playing one tune at a time. Oh, okay. And then I learned to read about me as I'm a self taught musician. Oh, okay. Right? And so 1967, I decided, well, it's time to form my own band. Mm -hmm. Right? So I got a, a call from a little club opening named the Bronco. Oh. Right in um, Crossroads, yes. Union Square. Yes, yes. Um, Eddie Knight phoned me and said, Well, I would like me to organize like a group, you know, like a trio and start playing there yes. regularly. So I said, Okay, I got a couple of guys and went in and we started playing some nice little swing music and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And as time went by, the, um, the keyboard player Roy Lidner left, and then the drummer left, and Keith Sterling mm -hmm. came in, mm -hmm. and a drummer named um, Tony Bennett. And so we had this show going on, you know, more modern stuff. Okay. We started playing. And um, they were added Larry MacDonald, Congo drums, yes. and Patrick MacDonald on guitar. Yes, yes. I was swinging that place four, four nights a week. You know, mm. full every night. Yeah. It was fantastic. As time went by you now, Robert Lake Jr. heard of us. Mm. He was um, the owner of um, Cortland Manor Hotel. Okay. Which was on Trafalgar Road at the time. Mm. And he came down there and heard us. And when he heard us, he called me and said, would like you up at the court of money, you know, but you're a good sounding band, you know. I said, really? Yeah. But that time, they had one of the best jazz bands up there. Oh. Right? Ernie Wrangling. Yeah, yes. You know? And that's really, really You know, all, yeah. all those heavy um, jazz musicians. musicians right? Yes, yes. And as time went by, I said, all right, I'll take the job. So we went in because I wanted more pop music now, you know? Yes, For real yes. stuff and a couple of soca and so like, you know? Okay, okay. And so the band went on and it was a nice job, you know? We were there for roughly three years. Oh. And the place was really rocking. Okay. Well, you know place. what I know? I know I know this too, yeah? I know that you play, you play a lot of, a lot of, a lot of rhythm, bass, uh -huh. And a lot of hit songs from Treasure Island, Studio One, can you tell us about? Well, 1967, 
after the band had started. Yes. You know, because I was no a professional bass yes, player yeah, good. with Carlos Malcolm now. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> Coxon heard about me mm -hmm. and he sent um, a message that he would like me to come down to the studio and join Jackie Me too mm -hmm. and the studio and band. Yes. So I went down 1968, January, and we started recording four tunes per day four days a week wow right yes man from 1968 you can't tell me about those big rhythms that you play in the music industry because you just tell me you, you do like four songs a day you know right right you can give me some of the name of those big hits yes well after i had started my band and all that and um coxon heard about me and, and sent for me I was there with the, um, the Studio One band, you know, Jackie Matu and Phil Kalenda and all these guys. And um, we, we did some songs like Nanny Goat. Big with him. Big yeah. song. Feel Like Jumping. Big song. Massacre mm -hmm. um, Fits. Eptones on top. Eptones, the whole album, yeah. the complete album. Also, um, yeah, party time and those big songs. Right. Um, the Jays, the, the Cables, Jays. Wow. you know, all those guys. Yeah. Phyllis, Quite a few Phyllis more. Dillon? Well, Phyllis Dillon was with Duke Green. Oh. But I also played um, for Phyllis Dillon quite a few hits. Yeah. In, including uh, Perfidia, which I big spoke tune. on for. If you hear a voice. Oh. Same with a sad lament, my dreams have faded like a broken melody. That wow. was me. <laughs> okay. So all right. those with him, yeah, you play yeah. all those songs. You, you don't the care. Bass. You don't care for me at all. Yeah. Big song. The techniques. The, the techniques, function, yeah. 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 And a, a few of... Um, Alton Ellis? Alton hits, yeah. So you yeah. don't play, you play anything for Bob Marley? Yes. One hit I gave Bob Marley. Yeah. Funky Reggae Party. Big tune. I, I played quite a few hits for um, Scratch Perry. Oh. Congos. The Congos, yeah. the Blue Official. Police Blue. and Thieves. Oh, Juna Mervyn. Yeah, quite oh. a few. I don't know the name of the, 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 the songs, you know. Yeah. But, you know, he, he really liked my bass playing and all bass called for me. Yeah, man, but he's a man. <laughs> you see, these are the things that we are telling them in a dance hall, in a, in a reggae music, you know. We have a credit. But credit is due. We have to give credit where it's due. Because a lot of people just know say Barris Gardner, you know, I want to wake up with you right. and some other nice bad tune, but them don't even know that side of you. Right. So it could, it right. could, I you mean, know, the world know this side. I had a popular band from the 60s. The 60s. Yeah. Coming in, we went down the road, you know, after we left the hotels. Yes. Right? The Barris Gardner happening. Oh. And we play all over the island. We play um, um, other islands. Uh, Guyana were very popular, Trinidad, mm -hmm. um, went to Canada, yes, um, Florida, and you know, with, with a, a good mo movement going. Um, so, uh, we made quite a few albums also. Okay. You know, okay. Boris Gardner, um, What's Happening mm -hmm. with the band, featuring the band. I did an album called Soulful Experience. I think it's my best album I ever done. Wow. It's but I, I can't tell you, some, you do some exactly. real, you do some real classic hits because right. that song every nigga is a star. I know a super oh, cat yes. touch it back. I know, I know a super cat touch back that song, yeah. and I know um, big I know youth. big youth. Yeah. Every nigga is a star, but that song is a classic, you know, man. It is really. Every nigga is a star. You can just draw a little note for me from that. Just a little note. I'm not sure anymore. Just how it happened before The places that I knew Were sunny and blue I can feel it deep inside This black nigger's pride I have no fear when I say it And I say it every day Every nigger is a star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Every nigga is a star. I say, who will deny that you and I and every nigga is a star? Yes. You see, as me, I tell you, you know, you see, we I you have to give respect to what respect you, the veteran. I grew up and know them money. You, know. I see you, you see me, I talk about I understand what I come up in my business. I mean, I never ever go straight. You understand? I understand all the things. You yeah, understand? Yeah. Some of them, you know, they want to change the dynamics of the music business, but they have to go back to the root. No man, you know, I have to really have the true talent. I see you. They have to learn from the people who pave the way. Them youth and have no respect yeah. in the music business. Yeah. Feel like they have it all lock and load and pin down. And that's how it go. You understand? You know, you have to show the respect to the pioneer foundation. <laughs> so, the money of foundation. Uh, somebody eats them when they talk about me. They don't even know what I'm saying. They don't eat them. So, I'm going to tell you. All right. I'm tell you. You're done. Yes, so, I'm going to read them. They all go for right now. That is it. I'm going to start doing some new stuff on them. That is it. I just recently mm. even get the beat where, where Dennis Brown do the song on me am to the promised land. Oh, yeah. I'm going to the promised land. I'm just get the, the beat there, you know. The okay. original, you know. I'm supposed to have something that come out on it soon. Yes. So I better know. So you so see that? I go back to the road. You so understand me? So because the new we are alone. No. And you see it though? When you see the money, you see it? Music make the money humble. Hmm. Because if the money not talk about the whole catalog, hmm. you don't know so the money play so much role in a, yeah. to the development of this music. And I watch and, and I look on some of them because you they talk a bag of things and say them. You have, understand? They have all kind of self-made titles where them give themselves. It's hmm. not nobody give them the title, them just give it to themselves. They just give it to themselves. You understand? And, and roll I, I, so I, I, I got to tell you something. But see where it starts from. Yeah? So it starts so, from. In my part of where it start from. You understand? You don't tell a man the other day is that daddy you are the best DJ of all time. Because yeah. I come see him in the thing and all know him still in existence. Yeah man and, and we show him all the respect. As the Morris Gardner, yeah man, when we watch enough time to and yeah, him still in existence and grew up on the thing. You understand? So how can I learn from people like them man and not to be great? That's true man. You have to be great. When you when when you tell me something, when you do this song I want to wake up with you, that was a mega it all in, in, in UK and all over. Yes, right um that's coming from 1986. Well, big tune. <laughs> the funny thing, you know, when that song was released, you had a craze going on named Sip Boops Day. Yeah, <laughs> super cat. Party at Boops were playing all over the Europe. Yes, man. Yeah, Boops right? Day and Sip Boops Day. <laughs> why? I said Boops to myself, why? You have to tune dead. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it just. Do it so like it belong, you know. No mm. one then barge you like it, like a play and it. I mm. wanna wake up with you. You know, and you know, just sound when you see boobs there and a whole heap of different boobs are going to say, boy, forget it. But me still grew up on them. No, but it made it drop. When it, when it moved now, it went to the ethnic market in um, New York. Mm. And boobs was number one. Mm. And I take my time and crawl up to number five. Yeah. Right? And when Boops goes on drop, Wake Up goes on hit one. Yeah. Something fresh for the people again, you know? Yeah. And in England. And so it went there first and it was five weeks number one in the New York ethnic. Call it a grow up. <laughs> so it does right. grow up. Yes. And you have some song R. I do songs in the past. Mm -hmm. And when I do, do, did that song, I never liked the song. Even the song when you wake them and I hold them back up. It happens. I never like the song. Then all of a sudden, I eat weeks that they upon the British and uh, England when it's up. Until it's not eat everywhere else. Right. Yeah, so Number whoa. one. And I never like the song. More than one song I did when I never like. And that is and it, it. And, and it grew. And it yeah, grew. Yeah, yeah. I grew. I just grew from scratch. I see how the song will grow. <coughs> You can't stop them song there. After True. the next 10, 20 decades. You remember yes. Willie Lindo? Yes, man. One of the, the, the biggest producers we have. Yes, man. But does he have himself work on these songs? You know? yeah. oh. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep a big tune. Now, I don't want to tell her another yeah. when I get back home. Right. Let's keep it that way, a big, big tune. And when, big, when, big tune. When Phil Matthias heard Wake Up, he said, Boy, 
the muffled carrot to England or release. Yeah. So I made arrangements and him go up and there him started pressing a little five hundred and in the end of the week the five hundred sell off. What? Already? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But for press and toes no. Bang! And next Gone. week it sell off. But them never have enough money for handle a, a big hit. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to Creole Records. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Right? Tune fly up into the top 200. So I went to the Creole and Bruce White who was the, um, the, 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 the man in charge. Yes, yes. Was on leave. Mm. So I said, boy, I have to find Bruce, you know, because we have something hot. I have to release now. So Bruce down in the France, relax in the sun. I <laughs> find him. Bruce, I have to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> in vacation, you gotta come back here. We have something now. Can't wait. <laughs> and the man cut him. him vacation. Uh, and that turned his back. Right after I'm come back now, and them start, you know, promote and all that. Tune and start climbing up the ladder, so. Mm -hmm. Right? And when it reach close to top 50, they send for me, you know, in Jamaica mm -hmm. to do a video. Mm -hmm. 